my lovely TTs, welcome back to the channel. You guys asked for it, so you got it. This is part three of singer-songwriter Jaguar Wright exposing the music industry. Now, we got into a lot of topics in part one and part two on how Jaguar exposed celebrities like Beyonce, Jay-Z, Summer Walker, Diddy, Faith Evans, Tyler Perry, and many more. So make sure you guys watch those videos before watching this one, but make sure you fasten your seatbelts because the secrets exposed in this video are the craziest ones thus far. Like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Rock Nation set Tory Lanez up and just used Megan Thee Stallion to do it. Now, this is what Jaguar Wright said in her Hip Hop News interview. She claims that the record label Rock Nation are the main culprits. Now, let's get into a little backstory on what happened between Tory Lanez and Megan Thee Stallion. On July 12, 2020, Megan and Tory Lanez both attended a party at Kylie Jenner's Hollywood Hills home. At around 4.30 the following morning, police responded to a call of G-U-N-S-H-O-T-S -S and arrested Lanez for carrying a concealed y'all know what in a vehicle now rapper megan the stallion we know that she was injured that night and she said that tory lanes was the reason why now we know that tory lanes is locked up right now facing 10 years but after court tory lanes father sinister peterson claimed that yes indeed he knows that rock nation 100 percent set his son up my god almighty i call heaven and earth to be a record today. That's that right. rock nation, right. you will crumble. You I am the apostle of God. That's right. And you will know who I am. That's right. Say that. Come on. Dirty. It's not over. It's not over. God does not lose. Never. And even though we've come to this juncture, trust me, you will see that our God does not fail. This is not the I first know time. that this is wickedness. This district attorney, Miss Kathy Todd. Use Megan to set up Tory, making sure they plowed him with everything that they could possibly think of so he could act like the animal he does when he get high. And they just pushed him into doing what he did. They finessed the out of Tory Lanez. And they used Megan to tell you to do it. Oats to have to do it because she wanted to leave rap a lot and, and be with uh, the Carters and Rock Nation. Mm. That's what happened. The judge was bought and paid for it six weeks ago. The juror 39, she's an actress. She's about to get a deal with Netflix. <laughs> Lie to you not. Hmm. Now, of course, we cannot say that this is factual. This is a conspiracy, but it wouldn't be too far-fetched because just months before Kylie Jenner's party, Tory Lanez was saying on his Instagram, on his Insta story, that he was going to expose Rock Nation. So could Rock Nation have set this whole plan up to get Tory Lanez arrested before they got exposed? Very ironic, right? Now, this one is actually pretty sinister. In 2003, Rihanna formed a musical trio with two of her classmates in her home country of Barbados. Without a name or any material, the girl group auditioned with America record producer Evan Rogers, who commented and said the minute that Rihanna walked into the room, it was like the other girls didn't exist. Now, mind you, this is 2003, so Rihanna is only about 15 or 14 years old when she was discovered by Evan Rogers. Now, the second ever meeting that he had with with Rihanna, he said that he made sure her mom was present to ask Rihanna's mom could she go to his hometown in the United States to record some demo tapes that could be sent to record labels. Now, Rihanna's mom actually agreed, but it's not said whether Rihanna's mom actually went with her or not. Now, Pondy Replay was actually one of the songs on Rihanna's demo tape that was shipped to Def Jam's recordings. The demo tape was heard by Jay Z and Jay Brown. In 2005, Rihanna was actually officially signed over to Def Jam's recording and later on decided to sign to Jay-Z's Rock Nation in 2010. Now this is a story that's told on many sites about Rihanna's discovery but Jaguar Wright claims that actually the story is darker than what they're trying to make it seem. What, what would it take for Jay-Z to go down like Diddy did? I don't know but I got an idea that Evan Rogers is going to help me figure that out. And who is Evan? Evan was the producer 
who only seemed to work on teeny bopper projects, who discovered Rihanna at 3 a.m. in the morning in a hotel room on the island where she comes from with no parental supervision. And then she was put on a private plane, a minor, from one country to another without parental supervision. And she ended up in a boardroom with Mr. Cotton without parental supervision. Y'all got young children. Would you just let your daughter leave and go to a whole other country? With... You don't know. Absolutely not. Doing talent shows at 3 a.m. <laughs> so you're saying that the rumors are true. There are rumors uh, circulating that Rihanna was actually here. Are you saying that that's... Starting to sound that way. Cause a daddy ain't show up till 24 hours later to pick up a half a million dollar check for his daughter. Maybe we should look more into that album, Auntie. That album cover was disturbing. A child bra with a crown over her head. Smear on her face. I don't know. <laughs> How don't people see SOSs anymore? Now, Jaguar actually pointed out a lot of things that went unnoticed, like Rihanna's anti-album cover, which is still a little sketchy, which we all still don't know what it means, or her song SOS, or Rihanna's album, or her whole look change when she decided to sign over to Rock Nation. Good girl gone bad. Jaguar claims that Rihanna was just a little girl from Barbados who got taken advantage of, but it ended up working out in her favor because she became this icon, she became very successful, and she was able to send money for her family in Barbados. Kanye West's mom was a sacrifice. Now, this is actually a very touchy topic and sad to say the least, but yes, this is Jaguar's words. In 2007, Kanye's mom, Donda West, passed from alleged complications due to surgery. Now, her surgeon, his name was Dr. Jen Adams, who didn't have the best history when it came to his work. Jaguar Wright claims that even Jen Adams knows that Kanye's mom's passing was a Illuminati sacrifice and not an actual surgical mistake. I do not think he's insane. I think he uh, might be struggling with a little buyer's remorse because he did buy into the game. Maybe that's why he's able to talk about his mom being sacrificed. Then I went back and did a little research about her plastic surgeon. As you know, she, um, the effects of plastic surgery. His record was terrible. He had been sued. Uh, malpractice insurance. He couldn't even get malpractice insurance for less than $10 million in some places. He, he didn't have the best record. If she for complications, why are you defensive as a, as a physician? You know, and then he had said in one of the interviews that he did, Kanye knows why his mom. I just wish he would tell the truth about it. That's what the doctor said. Oh, wow. And this was a year and a half after Don. And now he's saying, my mother was sacrificed? I don't know. Is he crazy? Is he? Now, over the years, Mr. Adams has done a lot of interviews, and he claims that Donna's offing was more so caused by the neglect of her nephew rather than anything that he did. But toxology reports say that this was strictly due to heart failure. Now, if Kanye West actually set up his mom and if her passing was a sacrifice, this would be pretty messed up because we knew that they had a lot of pictures together. It seemed like Kanye West really loved his mom, and she was his biggest support system when he first became famous and big in the music industry so this would be pretty messed up even to this day we see that kanye west is still representing his mom so i will have to say that this secret or conspiracy is definitely pretty far-fetched men are ghostwriting for the female rappers of today now this is a small topic however it's seemingly true jaguar doing an interview with real life production said that it's not the female rappers rapping their lyrics from experience it's actually their male writers let's just keep it all the way 100 
All of the hottest female rappers are all ex-strippers. They don't write their rhymes, allegedly. This is playing make-believe at its highest level. But the women ain't ghost right. All of these women are out here buying into saying it's being written by a dude. This is a dude's perspective on how a woman should be talking and then the other women listen to her and be like, ooh, that's how she talking. That's how I'm talking, girl. Yeah, yeah girl. girl. Power and who? I don't call that empowerment. I call that impimpment. You yeah. ain't empower. No. Pimp. And juicing it up and putting here there, you spitting it out on his behalf. Like for real, for real, when you look at it, these ghost writers is pimps and the artists, are they bottom? Now this is facts in some cases. Now I'm not saying that every female rapper has a ghost writer, but most do. Let's go ahead and get into the facts, okay? Cardi B's popular single, Bodak Yellow, was actually created by Partisan Fontaine and Laquan Green and other male writers. Lil Yachty wrote the City Girls popular single, Act Up, claiming he knows what women want to hear. Time Row and Buddha help Megan the stallion write her song don't stop and the list goes on i'm pretty sure a lot of their raps they write themselves but we cannot sleep on the male writers who actually help them a lot now last but not least pastor td jakes was at a diddy party but the only reason he could have been at a diddy party was for money or sex now yes we know it shocked the world when they found out that bishop td jakes and diddy were seemingly friends but with diddy's recent lawsuit and bishop td jakes actually being mentioned in one of them people believe that he might have had something to do with diddy's sinister acts if bishop jakes was at a diddy party there could only be two reasons money or that's all that happens at Diddy parties. Money. A pastor though? And out of all pastors, TD Jakes? Mm, I don't know. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment section. Now this is the end of part three. But if you guys want a part four, you definitely let me know in the comment section. Now I'm not saying that there's a lot more to be said or a lot more that Jaguar has exposed. But trust me, there's a couple of other things that we have not talked about in either one of my part one, part two, part three videos that we definitely have to get into. Once again, thank you so much for watching Room for Tea. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in my next video. Have a blessed rest of your night.